Hey everyone, my name is Rahul. I'm an internal medicine attending physician. And today I'm gonna to be talking to you about what are the most effective masks that healthcare providers should be using when seeing COVID-19 patients. And surprisingly, it's not the N95 masks. It's actually something far more interesting. So the biggest reason I wanted to make this video was to educate more healthcare providers on the use of P100 mask respirators and filters. These are basically the best possible protection that you can get from COVID-19. The most popular of these respirators are made by 3M, the same company that makes N95 masks. And the filters are also certified by the NIOSH, or the National Institute of Occupational Safety and Health, which is the same federal agency that certifies N95 masks. These masks are quite affordable, widely available, last longer than N95 masks, yet surprisingly, few of us healthcare professionals even know about these, which is part of the reason that they are so plentiful in supply. This is at a time when N95s are in a global supply shortage to the point where many of us are using N95s well past their originally designed recommendations. Even though many of us are now getting vaccinated against COVID-19, the vaccine efficacy rate is not 100% and its protection against different mutated strains of the virus may vary. For these reasons, I wanna educate more healthcare professionals on exactly what are these respirators, how to use them and how to get them. So what exactly is a respirator? These are called elastomeric respirators, which are basically plastic and rubber face pieces that serve two primary functions. One of which is to form a perfect seal on your face like this. And the second role is to connect to a filter of your choosing such as this so that you get a finished product, which is a respirator and a filter combined. The respirator by itself will not protect you and it needs to connect to two filters to provide you with protection. So then this begs the question, what exactly does P100 mean, and why should you consider using this versus the N95 mask? So here's a table explaining what all this means. The letter P means that a filter is oilproof, while N means it's not oilproof. This usually does not matter for healthcare professionals seeing COVID patients. What is more important, however, is the 100, and this is the first advantage of P100 filters I want to talk to you about, which is that you are getting better protection, almost 100% protection. And while there haven't been any formal studies comparing infection rates in providers wearing N95 masks versus providers wearing P100 masks, I don't see why anyone would compromise on this extra level of protection given that it could potentially mean the difference between you getting infected or not. To put it concisely, you should really going, be going for almost 100% protection rather than just 95% protection. I also recommend that you check out this five minute video, which I've also linked in the description, which covers a lot of the physics behind how these N95 and P100 masks work and how their electrostatic properties prevent COVID droplets from entering and bypassing the mask. The next really important thing that I wanna talk about with regards to these P100 masks is the seal. The seal of a mask is far more important than people realize. In fact, one would rather have an N95 fitted perfectly than a P100 fitted imperfectly, because even the smallest gap in airflow can lead to a single viral droplet being pulled in from the air and through that small gap in the airflow into your respiratory system. Because these respirators are made up of plastic and rubber, not only is the seal better when it goes on your face, but more importantly, the seal is not going to degrade with repeated usage and wear and tear because of the fact that it's rubber. No matter how many times you keep putting it on your face and taking it off, the seal will always be maintained. Moreover, the good thing with these respirators is that they have straps that you can use where even if it initially feels a little loose, you can always tighten it by pulling on this to make the seal even tighter. This is in contrast to N95 masks where even though they're already tight, you can't really make these tighter than already is. These things are important because I've noticed that a lot of the N95 masks that I've used over many months tend to lose their ability to give a perfect seal due to the impact of repeated usage on its structural integrity where even if it looks relatively okay on the outside, when put on, there still might be some small gaps in airflow where unless I'm pinching the nose part and applying pressure, then I'll feel those gaps in airflow. But obviously when you're seeing a patient, you can't constantly keep the mask on your face with pressure the entire time. Moreover, sometimes life happens and your N95 gets completely bent or broken, undermining its ability to protect you. With the P100 filters, the fact that they are rubber and plastic means that they're not gonna be bent or broken as easily. Lastly, understand that N95s were originally designed for a single time use, not meant to be used for more than eight hours of continuous or intermittent usage. 
Due to their global shortage, a lot of us have been pushing these limits and wearing them for well past these originally designed recommendations. Frankly, even if there is an unlimited supply of N95 masks where I could use one for every patient encounter or every time I walked in the room, I would still rather use the P100 masks over the N95 masks because you never know if the one N95 mask you pick up happens to have a small gap in airflow that you can't feel. The other really great benefit that I'd like to talk about with these P100 respirators is the fact that you can easily clean them with medical grade wipes or even Lysol wipes. Because of the fact that they are plastic and rubber, you can easily put the solution on the plastic without degrading its filtering ability. This is in contrast to the N95 masks where if you were to use Lysol wipes on a N95 mask, for instance, it would actually damage the filter, compromising its ability to protect you. The next part of the video that I'm gonna focus on is gonna be the logistics of how to use these masks. And the first aspect that I'm gonna focus on is the size. So when you go on different websites to look at these masks, they're gonna come in three sizes, which are gonna be small, medium, and large. Generally, medium will fit the vast majority of people. It is what I use. Uh, you can decide if you wanna go small or large before you buy it. Unfortunately, there's really no way to try it before you buy it, but generally medium will fit most people. And again, even when you put it on, you can always tighten it more using the straps, such as doing this, and then finding the straps here and just pulling. The other really important logistic to cover with all of these respirators is the fact that all of them have exhalation valves. This is fine for a mask to have as long as you take care to cover the valve with another mask so that you're also protecting those around you in addition to protecting yourself. Now, there is a very easy and standardized way to cover the exhalation valves of all of these respirators with a surgical mask, which is to simply wrap the surgical mask around the filters. With this respirator, for instance, all you do is you take the surgical mask and you wrap it around the filters and you let it go and it covers the valve perfectly. Or the same thing with the full mask respirator, you again take the surgical mask, wrap it around the filters, and then you're covering the exhalation valve on the bottom right here. If you're seeing a COVID positive patient, one could theoretically make an argument that one doesn't need to cover the valve because the patient already has active COVID disease and you can't give it to them through your own exhale droplets. Though with the rises in new genetic mutated strains worldwide, one should probably just cover the valve anyways. Lastly, the other point I'll make is that the exhalation valve does reduce the resistance to exhalation, so it does actually make it easier to wear these for prolonged periods of time. Even if you're covering the exhalation valve with a surgical mask, it still reduces that resistance to exhalation, making it far easier to wear. N95s, over a long period of time, that increased resistance to exhalation can make you a little fatigued out, but otherwise it's nothing major. In terms of which model numbers of these respirators to order, I put more information in the description, but generally you're gonna be looking at either the half face mask respirators, which covered the nose and the mouth, or the full face mask respirator, which not just covers the nose and the mouth, but also offers eye protection. Generally, most of you watching this will probably end up going with the half face mask ones, given that these run from 12 to $25, whereas the full face mask respirator can go easily above $100. For the half face mask respirators, there are gonna be two primary models you're gonna be looking at. One of which is gonna be the 6200 series, and the other is gonna be the 7500 series. Both are great and equally comfortable. The biggest difference is gonna be where the exhalation valve points. With the 6200, the valve generally faces forward, while with the 7500, the valve faces downward. I do find that covering the valve with a surgical mask it's easier with the 6200 as compared to the 7500, just because the valve face is downward and it's a little harder to get it to wrap around. Uh, but generally both will be fine. And I would only go with this if you were not able to get this. After you've picked your respirator, the next important step is to figure out exactly which P100 filter you're gonna get. And surprisingly, there are a lot of different types of P100 filters. I put a link in the description with more information from 3M on what are the different ones and what do they do. Generally, these are gonna be the three main ones that most of you all will be looking at. The single most important attribute of any P100 filter is its ability to protect against particles or particulates, which all of them do by default. Some of the cartridge ones will also protect against gases. This is usually not as important in healthcare settings, but just something to be aware of. The first type of filter to talk about are the so-called pancake filters. So these are called the 2097s. Uh, there's also 2091s. So these filter both particulates and some organic vapors. 
These are great for protecting you from COVID-19 patients, but their material is quite similar to the N95 mask. And again, if you take a medical grade wipe such as Lysol or Cavi wipes and you wipe the surface of these filters, it will damage the filter, compromising its ability to protect you. The filters that I'm gonna most recommend for most of you watching these videos are gonna be the 7093 or 7093 filters that are made by 3M. So these are P100 filters that filter only particulates, but again, the advantage of these is that you can wipe them with medical wipes and you're not gonna compromise the filtering ability because actually the filter is located here. So if you're cleaning around here, or even if you're wiping this, the air ultimately gets sucked in through here and you're not going to be damaging the filter when using wipes on the outside. Now, there are some more advanced cartridge filters such as the 609021 or 3M 60921 filters. Uh, these will filter particulates and some gases. These are usually more so used in lab settings while the 7093 only filter particulates. Um, generally, I would only try and go for these if you can't find the 7093 in stock. Um, these might be a little bit overkill given that they're a little thicker, but again, either of these would be fine. Another really important logistic in question is how long these filters last and how often they need to be replaced. The best answer is that these filters will usually last you many months, but it depends exactly how often you use them. Each of these filters comes with an expiration date. So when I got these last year in 2020, the expiration date was 2025. So the recommended use is around five years. The point at which you need to actually replace them is actually interesting, and it's more when it gets subjectively harder to breathe. So when it gets subjectively harder to breathe, what, what's happening is that more and more particles are getting stuck in the filters, whether it's dust or cloth fibers. This doesn't actually mean that the filter is less effective. If anything, a filter that has more stuff stuck in it is actually more effective because there's gonna be larger things stuck in the filters that are preventing small things like COVID viral droplets from entering. In some videos I found online, there were people I saw who were using them for six to eight hours a day, and they said that theirs lasted them six months. Uh, if you're only using them when you're seeing COVID patients, and if you're only doing that for like two, three hours a day, uh, they'll probably last you months, if not potentially years. One really quick logistic of how to put the filters on. So you'll notice with the spot where the filter goes on, there are two large and one small little gaps here. Uh, the small one being on the top, and these will actually correspond to the filters where you can also see here, there are two large and one small um, little nick or gap. So you wanna make sure that the two large ones and the small one align perfectly before you put them on. Otherwise, if you try and have the small one or the big one, you'll keep trying to turn it and it won't get on. So usually all you do is you just make sure they line up and then you line them up and then you try and turn clockwise and you'll hear a click sound and they go. And you wanna make sure that you do the other one too. I'm also gonna just briefly talk about 3M's full face mask respirators. The one that they sell is called the 6800 series. So this offers both nose, mouth, as well as eye protection. And this is compared to the half face mask ones, which cover the nose and mouth, but do not cover the eyes. Theoretically, one could just use the half face mask respirator with a pair of good eye goggles with a good seal, and theoretically, it would be just as good as the full face mask respirator. These generally go for above $100, so unless you're um, someone like an anesthesiologist intubating patients or a respiratory therapist who's around COVID patients a lot, uh, generally, the half face mask respirators will be just as good as long as you have good eye protection. This is just ensuring that any droplets that may come from the patient aren't, on, um, aren't going on the rest of the face. If you all wanna know what I personally use when I'm in the hospital seeing COVID patients, I prefer the 6200 half face mask with the 7093 filters. Then I cover the exhalation valve with a surgical mask as I described before. Then I use these tight eye safety goggles on my eyes. And then on top of this all, I put a large uh, face shield. And personally, I like the setup more than the full face mask 6800 because uh, with this, the face shield is blocking a lot of viral droplets from even getting to the P100 filter. Uh, while the P100 filter of the 6800 series is theoretically offering you 100% protection, you can't exactly cover the filter from being exposed to the viral droplets. But with this, at least, you're preventing a lot of viral droplets or at least a certain percentage of them from even making their way to the filter. One of the single most important bits of advice that I can give with these respirators, and I cannot emphasize this enough, is mask hygiene. 
I can make a whole separate video about this, but generally do not let anything that could be contaminated with COVID-19 touch the inside part of the mask. So this would mean, for instance, not taking the mask and taking your hand and grabbing it by the inside. You'd always wanna make sure that you're grabbing it by the outside. Um, also, you wanna make sure and take care that the straps of the mask, which you could easily be touching with your hands, don't find their way and touch the inside part of the mask. So in terms of where to find these respirators and filters, uh, you can find them from a number of sellers on Amazon and eBay. Uh, I put a link in the description to a particular vendor on eBay that I've had good experience with. Uh, I'm not particularly endorsing them, but again, I've had good experience with them and that's where I've gotten all of my gear from. Generally with any vendor that you go with, you're always gonna wanna make sure that you look at uh, how reputable the one vendor is, where is it based out of, how many reviews have they had, how many of them are positive, uh, not to mention if they've also been selling some of these products years before the pandemic started. From the particular vendor that I use on eBay, what's actually nice is that you can sometimes get combinations where you can get both the respirator and the filters. This particular one uh, from that vendor at the time of this video goes for about $25, which I think is a great deal. There may be other companies that make similar respirators and filters. I've heard of various products ranging from Envo masks to other similar P100 respirators. You can do your own research. I don't have as much experience with them and I definitely recommend going with what's made by 3M since they are the most reputable and since I've seen more of the products in hospitals myself. There you have it guys. I hope you found that useful. Uh, leave a like. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate at all to comment. I'm always happy to discuss further. Uh, thank you again, stay safe and goodbye.